Hello, this video is designed to demonstrate how to create and grade activities using D2L rubrics. These rubrics can be associated to assignments and discussion areas within D2L. The first step is to create the rubric. It is highly suggested that the instructor create this rubric in Word or some other location first. He or she will then be able to copy and paste the elements into the rubric area in D2L. To begin, enter the course. Choose Course Admin on the navigation bar. Under Assessment, choose Rubrics. Notice that some rubrics are already listed. These are templates that you can adopt. You can either choose to use them as is, or you can choose the drop down and copy the rubric. By copying the rubric, you can then edit it to fit your needs. Note, you cannot edit the templates themselves. You will, need to ha you will have to copy them to make any adjustments. Let's build our own rubric. Choose New Rubric at the top of the screen. You will be asked to give the rubric a name. Make sure to publish it so that the rubric can be associated to activities and can be used. Under Rubric Type, you will select if you want to use an analytic or a holistic rubric. Most of the time, you're probably going to use an analytic rubric. It looks like a traditional rubric with criteria and levels. A holistic rubric just has overall criteria and levels. Let's start with an analytic rubric. Then you choose how many levels and how many criteria you would like to have in the rubric. Most of the time you'll leave the scoring method on points so that the rubric will add up points as you select the appropriate level when grading. Make sure to leave the rubric visible to learners. Now go to the Levels and Criteria tab. Now you will begin to either copy or type in the rubric elements. The criterion will be listed on the left side. This might be your categories of organization, grammar, citations, etc. Across the top, you will need to indicate your levels. You can rename them to not meeting, meeting, exceeding, or whatever you would like for those levels to be named. Make sure to include the appropriate number of points per level as well. In the middle area, you're going to put the qualifiers for each level per criteria. For example, in this box, we are going to put what the student has to do in order to earn a level 3 for our first criterion. In the initial feedback area, you can build in default text that will display to the student if they score that particular level for that criterion. Remember that you can add levels on the far right side, or you can add criterion at the bottom. At the very bottom, you can add in an overall score. You probably will name the levels the same as you did above. You can then determine how many points it takes to earn the highest level. For example, if the highest score students can earn on this rubric is a 30 by making all 10s for each criterion, then maybe level 3 will be a 30. If they score all fives, that would make it a 15, so maybe that is the qualifier for level two. Say that the student earns two tens and a five. They would be marked in level two because they are falling between the 15 and 30 mark. Now that you've completed making the rubric, you can close. The next step is to associate the rubric to your activities. You can associate rubrics to assignment and discussion areas within D2L. Let's first go to the discussion area. We've already created our discussion and provided the name and topic. To associate the rubric, go to the Assessment tab. Make sure that it's already associated to a grade item. Also make sure that the score out of reflects the highest grade the student can earn on the rubric. In this case, it was 30 points, so we need to put a 30 here. Below, there is a place to add the rubric. You will then select the rubric that we just created and save and close. Now the student is ready to post to the discussion. As he or she goes to the discussion area, he or she is able to see the rubric before posting. The 
This is a good idea so that the student can see what is expected beforehand. Now let's grade the student. We could grade him or her via the discussion area or the grades area. To grade through the discussion area, choose the drop down by the name of the discussion and assess topic. Then choose topic score under the name of the student. Scroll to the bottom to see the posts. You can then fill out the rubric for the student. Notice that when you select a level, the generic feedback that we added is displayed. Also notice the topic score is updated in the upper right corner. You can also add more direct feedback if you like. If needed, you can override the scores. For example, maybe this student posted late and so I want to deduct points. I can do so by selecting the points and manually changing them. I now choose to publish at the bottom and then save and close. If I had wanted to grade through the grades area, I could go to grades and enter grades. Make sure that I am on the standard view and then I can click on the discussion icon for that student. I can then see the posts and complete the rubric just like I did within the discussions area. As the student, I can see the completed rubric in the grades or discussion area. In the discussion area, I choose the particular discussion and then view graded rubric. I can see the overall points as well as how I scored in each level. In the grades area, I can choose view graded rubric beside the name of the grade item. Now let's try holistic rubric. I go back to the same area under course admin and rubrics. I will make a new rubric, but this time I will choose holistic. In this case, we aren't looking per criteria. We are only indicating the number of levels. Remember, with holistic rubrics, there is just one overall criteria that is being determined. I can then rename the levels if I wish and include the qualifiers for each level. I will then need to determine the percent the student earns based upon each level. Since there are four levels in this case, it makes sense to make each 25%. That means that if a student earns a level three, they will earn a 75% on the rubric. I can also choose to add the, the initial feedback that will automatically display like I did with the previous rubric. The rubric auto saves, so now I can close. The next step, like before, is to associate it to the assignment. I've already created the assignment already, but I do need to go to the Properties tab. At the bottom, make sure the assignment is associated to a grade item. In this case, the score out of should be 100 because the highest grade you can make on the holistic rubric is 100%. You can then add rubric, pick the correct one, and then save and close. Now as a student, I submit my paper to the assignment area as normal. When I click on the assignment area, I can see the rubric even before I submit. I then upload my paper as normal. As the instructor, I have the ability to grade via the assignment or grades area. 
I would go to the assignment area, click on the name of the assignment, and then evaluate by the name of the student. I can then choose the rubric and complete it. I can add additional feedback or override the scores if need be. I then publish the results. In the gradebook, making sure I'm in standard view, I can click the submission icon in the correct column. This takes me to the same area to mark the rubric and submit the grade. As the student, I can see the feedback by going to the grades area and choosing to view the graded rubric. I can also go to the assignments area and view feedback here. This has been a video of how to create, associate, and grade using D2L rubric.